Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So it's been quite a while since I've done a viewer appreciation video and uh, I need to do one because uh, a bunch of boxes have been showing up and uh, I need my workbenches back. <laughs> so um, there's really some generous folks out there. I just want to say thank you very much and uh, I'm humbled by the, the generosity of, of people out there and um, it it's it's still weird for me to, to get uh, stuff in the mail that people really like what, what we're doing here on the channel and they want to send stuff into the show. So I hope they get a kick out of seeing their, their stuff on camera and uh, talking about it. And um, we got some, some really neat stuff, uh, some stuff from Europe. We've got some stuff from the Brooklyn Navy Yard from the 1950s. Um, we've got some complete mystery items and uh, and oh some uh, fellow youtuber stuff and it's just it's across the board so uh, thank you very much folks out there that sent stuff in and uh, let's go check some neat stuff out okay <clears throat> this first lot is uh, uh, some interesting stuff from a guy named Lewis Brigman and he's in Anoka Minnesota and uh, Lewis and I have traded a bunch of emails back and forth. Um, he sent me some really neat pictures of a giant Mitsubishi bridge mill uh, at a place that he worked. Uh, had a hundred foot travel. That's what's uh, <laughs> the interesting part. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what Lewis sent us here. Uh, there's some kind of neat collection of stuff here. Let's start with this. Um, this is a um, an indicator arm, okay, kind of a double jointed indicator arm, but this is made by the Moore uh, Precision Tool Company, so the guys that make jig borers and stuff. Um, and it's kind of a universal deal, but what it has in here is it has this fine thread, and I pulled one of these out and um, for attaching an indicator to it, okay, so let me see if I can get it started in there. Yep, got lucky. All right, uh, and it's split so that it's it actually is this friction fit, and the idea is that uh, um, it's got you know a little five millimeter dovetail in there, and then now you can lock your indicator. So now I can use the indicator as a wrench, right? <laughs> so uh, you can um, attach an indicator with a dovetail. So it's kind of a neat setup, and it goes in a chuck or a collet or whatever. And you can uh, you can do the business there. So that's pretty cool and made by Moore, which is always always neat stuff. Uh, that's a really fine uh, tool making company there. So okay, so there's that. These guys here, I'm not even sure what these are. There's some kind of tool sockets or something threaded on one end. They got a little taper on them, and then that's about it. And uh, they're marked T20. Have no idea, Lewis, what those are. Uh, it's a mystery. Maybe you can. Uh, clue me in on what those are, a couple of tubes of those, so uh, not clear what those are, so maybe somebody knows what those are. Get a better look at it there, okay. If somebody knows what those are, throw that up in the comments, it'd be cool, and let everybody know uh, uh, what these little chinguses are. <laughs> All right, uh, next is kind of an interesting uh, decorative old level here. Uh, this is Stanley, I think. Uh, yeah, Stanley Rule and Level Company. All right, and um, Lewis removed the uh, the vial, it's in here. And uh, the, the vial needs to be re-bedded in this, uh, in this uh, pocket here. So um, that ought to make an interesting little, little project is how to get that in there. Um, because you got no chance of of calibration there, so you got to get it in there. You got to get it in there right the first time. <laughs> and he separated the screws out, so that's kind of a neat looking level there. I love the little scroll work on the side, and it's got a old font here, uh, Stanley font, and all that. So that'll make a cool little project to kind of. I got to figure out what to pot that with. I've never potted a, a vial, so. Uh, um, some kind of casting compound or something like that or plaster or I'm not sure what so I have to do a little research on that It kind of make a neat, neat neat little deal there all right so this um, it's just a Mitotoyo uh, gauge block and um, so here's a, an instance where they spell it uh, G-A-U-G-E instead of G 
AGE. Both are correct. Um, you know, there's just some variation uh, you see. Um, and this one is a, what was this? <clears throat> I don't remember now what size this was. Well, there it is, 400 thousandths. So, uh, um, so, you know, sometimes it's nice to have little stray uh, gauge blocks around that you can use for stuff because they're great little spacers and uh, um, they're very accurate parallel and all that. So, um, uh, kind of nice to have some strays. So, thank you, Lewis. That's really nice. Um, and speaking of more, here's a more book, uh, Precision Hole Location. Um, if you ever see a copy of this, uh, pick it up because uh, it's really. Um, a valuable resource on uh, die making and precision measuring and um, metrology practice uh, in general, right? Uh, they're just really wonderful resources. Um, stuff that you might not even think about, okay? So, uh, and then in the back they have uh, tables of, uh, of uh, bolt circles and stuff like that for doing jig boring work, okay? So, uh, some neat pictures. And um, you know, a little secret here, if you look in the background of the pictures, you can find uh, tools you never knew you needed, okay? So, <laughs> a kind of a handy, uh, a handy deal there, so now you can find other things to search for, so. All right, so that's a really, that's a great book. Um, I have uh, several of these uh, more books, uh, uh, Foundation of Mechanical Accuracy and Holes, Contours, and Surfaces. Um, so that, I think this completes my collection there, so that's great. Thank you very much, Lewis. And then uh, we got some Torx drives here. Um, you know, usually when you buy a cutter body, uh, they throw in one of these. So uh, apparently Lewis had uh, a bunch of face mills or something uh, that uh, they got some, uh, some Torx drivers. So uh, um, anyway, always handy to have uh, the screwdriver type, pretty cool. Lewis, thank you very much. That's awesome, uh, little package you sent over. And, um, and uh, I, I do appreciate it, my friend. Talk to you later. Okay, so this next pair comes to us from uh, a viewer, Steve um, Seidel or Seidel. I'm not sure uh, quite how he pronounces his name. I, I work with a guy whose last name is very similar to that, and, uh, and he pron pronounces it Seidel. Um, but uh, it might be Seidel. So uh, anyway, Steve. Uh, Apologize if I butchered your name there, um, but Steve sent a couple of neat things here. Let's look at this hammer first. This is a uh, it's a bronze hammer made by the Lixie Company, and um, it's got this very interesting kind of pyramidal tapered uh, uh, pecker on the back there. Now this one, uh, as Steve mentioned, is kind of chowdered a little bit, but uh, um, it's still certainly serviceable. We can fix that up a little bit. And uh, and get her looking good. Now these uh, these Lixie hammers are kind of expensive actually um, for their size, and uh, you see them on eBay, and uh, they make some dead blows and a few other things. So check out Lixie hammers. Uh, they make a, a neat variety of stuff. I don't have one of these actually. This is kind of cool. Um, one neat use for this is uh, you know if you got to hit something, uh, you know well small okay let's pretend it's small um, you know you can use a, a, a hammer like this and put it right on the uh, on the thing that you want to drill or you want to hit and then hit the hammer there that way you don't you know risk sliding off the piece and spoiling something off to the side so you get a, a really accurate uh, clobber there when you uh, when you pre-place the uh, the point so that's pretty cool. That'll go in the uh, the hammer rack. I'll probably uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Actually, uh, do a little filing on that or belt sanding or whatever to kind of reshape that. But it's a good little weight. I like it. So Steve, thank you very much. That's cool. And then um, he sent this book along, uh, Machine Shop Library, and uh, the author of this is uh, Colvin and Haas. And Fred Colvin is a uh, kind of an icon in the uh, early uh, uh, machining uh, uh, literature, right? His name shows up a lot, which is kind of neat. This book's from 1913, and it's mainly about uh, jigs and fixtures, and hence the title, Jigs and Fixtures, okay? And um, so, you know, you hear people say, uh, oh, I have experience with jigs and fixtures, right? Well, 
in the traditional sense, and I think I've talked about this before, in the olden days, these were your kind of um, classic jigs and fixtures here, right? Where you would throw, you would put a part in there and it would be supported and then you would, you would drill through in, uh, in these stationary bushings and things like that. Or you might have to drill multiple sides. So in the classic sense of jigs and fixtures, yes, it covers a lot of ground, right? But this is the, you know, this is what people meant in, back then, you know, jigs and fixtures, right? Now, the machines are more universal, so the needs for these kinds of things, lots and lots of machine work was done on drill presses, literally, right? And to get consistent results, they used jigs and fixtures like this that, that guided the drills and reamers and things like that so that they got repeatable, uh, accurate results. So um, anyway, there's a ton of stuff in here on that. And then in the back, um, there's an interesting section on uh, design and materials for gauges. Um, you know, snap gauges and plug gauges and ring gauges and kind of trying to standardize dimensions for, uh, for these things. So uh, there's some information on that. So kind of a neat, uh, neat text. Um, Steve, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's a cool book. And uh, I very much appreciate uh, the very generous gifts you sent. Thank you. All right. So... You know, uh, this is a good example of this here, right? You know, we have this uh, bronze hammer that Steve sent, and uh, there's a bunch of, it's kind of mushroomed a little bit. So instead of, you know, sanding all that off, sometimes you can, um, you can uh, re-displace that material and uh, kind of restore, uh, uh, restore an edge as, as opposed to filing it away. So, you know, I can go over here on the anvil. And I'm just trying to push that material back up a little bit. You know, once you file it away, you're done, right? And um, so, you know, you can see it's pushing it back up in there. Right? You know, some of this is going to flake off, but... Uh, um, you know, like I said, when, once you grind it off, you're, you know, that's it. Your game over, right? It's material's gone. Actually, um, I have to look up what these are made out of because we might be able to build this face up with silicon bronze a little bit and kind of uh, bring some of these edges back without melting the handle out there. So we might give that a go. So anyway, that's a just a little thing. You know, if you got a um, a dink, you know, don't necessarily file it off. Sometimes you can push it back up and then then your edge isn't, uh, you don't lose your edge, so. Okay. Okay, so a little bit of welding with some silicon bronze and some file work and a little sandpaper. And that thing's looking pretty good now. So, uh, Steve, thanks, uh, that's a nice hammer, and now it's restored, and now I, uh, I have one of these Lixi bronze hammers. Thank you very much. All right, so this next one, uh, it comes to us from a guy named uh, Paul Jacobs, and um, I have the uh, dubious honor of being uh, the last guy to uh, acknowledge his cool gift, which was this uh, cool k and hat, and I've been wearing the crap out of this thing. Uh, um, I love it. It fits me really good, uh, and, and uh, of course, you know, we all love this logo. And uh, as a reminder, I did some shirts a while back, and uh, so we're all very much uh, keen on that. And to help develop the logo, now Paul scanned an image and, uh, and then cleaned it up and then had, uh, this, is, this is embroidered here, this is screen printed, but I bought a, uh, a little nameplate off of a machine. Um, a, a detachable nameplate, so I duped it out with somebody on uh, on eBay to get that, and uh, so that helped me. And a uh, an old uh, maintenance manual had a, a logo on it, so uh, that's how I did mine. So, uh, Paul, thank you very much. I really like this hat. This is my uh, my current. You, you know how you go through. Uh, you uh, you have a hat and you wear it for a while, and then uh, it, something happens to it, and then you get another one, and you get another one, so you end up with a bunch of these. Well, this is number one right now, so thank you very much, and uh, much appreciated. All right, this, this next Titanic lot comes to us all the way from uh, 
uh, Lillehammer, Norway, and uh, this is a Sigmund Forsyth. Um, he put a little package together and, uh, and, and sent it off. I think Adam got one, uh, and I'm not sure who else got one, but uh, there's some kind of interesting stuff in here. Um, you know, this is actually fairly common uh, that uh, inserts kind of become obsolete for companies. Uh, they change their processes or they change their parts or uh, they find better, uh, um, better inserts. So um, it's fairly common to find, you know, you know, packages or lots of inserts that are uh, um, out there that uh, they don't use anymore, or like that a particular company doesn't use anymore. So a lot of these, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through them all. There's uh, many, many different styles here. There's some milling inserts and the uh, turning inserts. Uh, the ones that I thought were kind of interesting were, let's see, let's get these bigger ones out. These are, uh, I believe, uh, these are milling inserts here. But what's cool about them is they're kind of, this is an interchangeable head style here. It's got a little, uh, a little connector. Oh, you know what? That connector looks, huh? Looks familiar. Um, anyway, um, sorry, I just kind of, <laughs> I digress there. So this is basically a ball end mill, right? And this plugs on the end of a, a shank of some sort, and you can. So instead of making the whole thing out of carbide, uh, they make the tip out of carbide. Um, so the tools cheaper it's not as stiff but it's cheaper and you just change the tips and uh, so this probably has some snap-in feature with a collar or something like that and uh, so there's a few styles of those in there those are fairly unique there and uh, now you could braise that on you could use it for a corner rounder in the lathe uh, there's you know there's you, it's limited by your imagination so you could do all kinds of stuff with these things and here's some uh, some solid rounds Oh, actually, these are ceramic, so, uh, yeah, they're super lightweight. So these are some kind of ceramic. I um, have to look that up. 1690 Sandvik, so uh, huh, I didn't notice those. Oh, yeah, there's a, bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of ceramic ones. Anyway, Sigmund, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you went to some trouble to send those. I do appreciate it, and uh, I'll pull some out that I, I can make use of and, uh, and pass them along to folks that, uh, that can uh, make use of them also. So thank you very much. All right, so this next lot, this next lot is from a fellow YouTuber. This is uh, Greg Halligan, and uh, he has a nice YouTube channel. And uh, he uh, sent me a little uh, a little care package of some interesting stuff here. Um, there's some some cute stuff in here. Actually, it's kind of neat. And uh, I looked at these taps and I go, God, those look funny, right? And uh, and sure enough, they're left hand. And he uh, he warns me in the uh, in his letter in his nice letter that he sent me here. So Greg, thanks for the heads up. I have a little box that I put all the left-handers in uh, uh, they keep them out of my way so uh, and uh, so these are actually uh, these are form taps here so they don't cut they uh, actually displace the material uh, these are really really nice for uh, if you don't if you have deep blind holes and you don't want to dig chips out of the bottom and you want the strongest possible tap now the downside of these is it's much more difficult to tell when they're getting dull. So you use them on a bunch of holes, and uh, um, and it's a little bit hard to tell when the taps are getting dull. So and when they break, man, they are stuck because the uh, the uh, the forming pressure is pretty high. So uh, but anyway, these look these look nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're not very well used either. So left-handers. So we got uh, some uh, little collection of inserts here. Uh, a couple of these I'll be able to use here. Uh, CNMG here. Um, what else am I going to be able to use? Not sure. I have to look uh, and see. But uh, there's at least one in there that I can use if I can get it out of the tape. So thank you, Greg. That's a nice little uh, collection of carbide there. Uh, some three flute drills here. These are kind of cool. Um, it's actually a good size. I'm, I'm going to try these out. Uh, these are Goo Ring. Um, and uh, we should give them a go and, uh, and see how they behave. Actually, these kind of look like they might, these might be, uh, 
Oh, they look good. They, they look all right. Well, we'll give those a try. Those are neat. Here's something truly frightening here. Some uh, number 76 drills. Let's, uh, oh yeah. Well, actually those are, uh, those aren't that, uh, those aren't that small. So, <laughs> so what is that? That's uh 76. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I don't know what a 76 is. So diameter wise, but, uh, those are pretty small. They actually don't look too bad. So, uh, uh, I've seen, I've seen some scary tools like that. So, <laughs> so we'll have to drill a hole for Greg on that one too. I don't know. There's a, there's quite a collection of stuff here. It's like some uh, custom step drill that somebody made there and some parabolic flute drills. This is a neat little collection uh, of stuff. Here's some, uh, some carbide end mills and some other various things. So Greg, thank you very much. Hey, and all you guys out there, if, if you haven't checked out Greg's channel, go check it out. Okay, here's a little link on the screen here for you. And um, there's a clickable link in the description. Um, Go check out his channel, throw him a subscription or something, throw a comment up on his channel, check him out. Greg's a cool cat, okay? So Greg, thank you very much. This is great, and uh, uh, thanks for the goodies. Okay, so this next one, this is a, uh, an interesting piece here. I'm going to bring it out. And uh, I'm not even sure what it's for. Um, it looks like some kind of uh, hydraulic cylinder. Um, you know that has a built-in valve here um, and this looks like a uh, an adjustable bleed here to me um, you know it, it, it kind of looks like the something you'd see on your on your drop saw right you know to regulate the uh, the down speed uh, is kind of what it looks like to me um, what it came off of I don't know it's a, it's a trip this comes to us from uh, Evan Roberts from uh, Wiley Texas um, and uh, looks like we need to send this back to Motion Industries there and uh, get a bomb do uh, do a, a cylinder rebuild on this monkey for us. <laughs> but it's very, uh, I mean, if you look at it, it's very intricate. You know, it's got all these little valve bodies with multiple screws, little philister heads. It's got this little arm here that uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't really notice any difference uh, in anything here. Yeah, uh, Evan, I have no idea what this is. It's pretty trippy. Uh, thank you very much for sending it in. Um, I'm kind of at a loss for words. And uh, okay, so it looks like it was mounted to this. Uh, oh yeah, there's some screws in the in the box that he mentioned in the letter there. So uh, you got me on this one. I have no idea what this is other than uh, it's some kind of hydraulic uh, cylinder. Um, and uh, <laughs> look, so yeah, this is a valve here. So fluid from one side to the other is going there, but uh, I don't know. Evan, uh, y you stumped me here, buddy. Thank you very much for sending that in, uh, taking the time to pack that up and, uh, and send it in. Thank you, sir. So this next, uh, this next lot of stuff uh, comes to us from, uh, from New Jersey, Lebanon, New Jersey. And this is from uh, Leigh Jezerek. Um, and uh, Leigh is uh, uh, kind of an interesting character. We uh, chatted on email a little bit. And uh, he, said, uh, he said something about uh, his bullshit meter doesn't read anything when he listens to me. So uh, I took that as a compliment. So, <laughs> so uh, the story on this, there's an interesting pile of stuff here. We'll go through it. Uh, the story is um, his dad in the 50s uh, was a volunteer air relay in the air relay service, uh, uh, ham radio stuff. And as part of that, it, it entitled him to access to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And I guess they had a salvage, uh, uh, a salvage place there where you could buy stuff or get stuff or whatever. And, um, and uh, keeping the safe from the Russians or whatever at the time uh, in the Cold War. And uh, so this has been sitting in his garage 
or somewhere for years and years and uh, he decided to send it along to the show. I'm not going to show you the end of the box. I know what's in here, uh, but we're just going to pop it open and uh, these will all be uh, surprises. So let's, uh, let's, let's get going here because there's a, there's a few things here and they're all interesting. And he's got this really nice blue paper. Actually, I kind of like this blue paper. All right, so first items here are a couple of Starrett surface gauges here. And uh, this one's got the uh, uh, both masts, uh, the, the, the tall and the short one. And there's the little baby one. There's the scriber. There's the, uh, the snug, straight scriber. That looks homemade there. And then, uh, now this is an interesting piece. I'll tell you about that in a sec here. And this, uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. That might just be a, be a stray uh, in the box there. It's an old school shoulder bolt. So we'll just set that aside. So uh, this is unmarked, but it is a Starrett, I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, some of the early Starrett uh, surface gauges, they didn't, uh, they didn't brand them for some reason. I don't know why. Now this one is, ouch. Oh, okay, it's got the little... Uh, it's got the little scribing base on it there. So this is a little mini one, and this is an old one here um, because it has this little guy, okay? And this little guy slides on one way or the other um, on the base here so that you can come up against, uh, you can come up against round stuff. It's a little V-block thing. So, uh, uh, in fact, I think Adam had one like this. Um, uh, you don't see these very often. Now, I have one like this, although it's not, a, it's not a, an old one like this. This appears to have never been used. It's still got the original, um, I don't know, that, I call it a cyanidic, cyanided coating. Uh, it's that mottled uh, colored blue coating. Uh, that's what I call it. I'm sure there's a, a proper name for it. Um, this one is missing the little uh, the little scribe, which is small diameter, but that's a that's an easy thing to make. Um, lay, that's pretty cool stuff. Thank you, sir. Uh, straight from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So now we got a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna zip through this pretty quickly, uh, and we'll move on to the uh, we'll move on to the next thing. All right, next up, it's a little uh, mystery box here. This is a Lufkin test indicator. Okay, um, it's a little attachment here, but let's let's look at the thing here. So this is an old school test indicator here. Short range, plus or minus four thousandths. Now it looks like uh, hard to tell here. This does not look like the correct stylus, or it's missing a. Uh, an additional piece on there. I don't know. I have to look it up. Maybe uh, maybe that's the way it is. Once again, this looks like it's never been used, okay? From what I can tell. It's just a mechanical guy there. But, you know, I mean, that's all you need when you're doing alignment stuff is a, you know, just an indicator um, to, to line things up. And uh, how does that get used? Uh, um... I don't know. Interesting. Well, I don't know how. Uh, eh, got me on the. You got me on the accessories here, so uh, I'm not sure what's uh, what's going on there. Anyway, that's pretty cool. That's real. That's uh, once again a little piece of history there, boy. Um, a little mechanical. In it. It's made out of formed sheet metal, you know totally encased in, in sheet metal and uh, um, so it's a Lufkin number uh, 199A okay there's the markings on it if you guys want to look it up and uh, uh, read a little more about it Lufkin tools are pretty awesome they were you know competitors of Starrett for many years and uh, um, you know Starrett's still around Lufkin's still around but they don't sell stuff like this anymore so pretty cool all right, next thing, another uh, another crispy box that's kind of uh, falling apart here. So this, I'm just going to pour this out here. And it looks like it was wrapped up in, in cellophane or something at some point. 
um, which is uh, this it's in great shape actually there's a, there's a handle so so it's an inside micrometer okay if you guys haven't seen this but this is neat because it's got a uh, um, it's got kind of a long-range handle there which is cool you can reach down into a bore um, and this thing still is nice and smooth and I think this is a Miller yeah Miller's Falls okay and then uh, it's got the different rods and uh, let's see here uh, let's see which side it's gonna be this side here there we go so yeah so you can uh, expand and uh, keep on going now this one you know as you can see has a uh, quite the range here um, what is that it's pretty, pretty good size there so it looks like this one could go up to about 12 inches this little set which is kind of neat and uh, and then these are to these are to actually to calibrate it here you can adjust the end fittings here um, and um, and calibrate it uh, against a, a micrometer. Okay, you can check it with a micrometer, which is kind of nice. But you can also read direct here too, which is cool too. Um, and it looks like it's got a little a little adjuster on this guy too. So pretty neat. I like that long handle. Handle solid. It's not tubular. And this is a nice touch here too. You see how they they tapered that down to the thread. You know, instead of making it square. Um, just kind of a, a a nice touch there. So, however, these were kept over the years. Um, they were well kept, and they didn't. Uh, uh, oh, look at that little, little inner piece there. Oh, you know what? So that's a, oh, I know what this is. Okay, I know how that works. So this is a spacer, so you can get to one inch. So you can put that in, and uh, and it gets even shorter. So it goes down to whatever that is, inch and a half. And, uh, and then this is the next increment, okay, and then the next increment, and so on and so on. So, uh, pretty neat. Okay, inside micrometer, Miller's Falls. All right, this next one is in that same lot, um, and this is pretty cool. Um, it's a geometric die head, um, and these are used in screw machines and uh, uh, for doing... Um, uh, threads and uh, they're very very quick and um, the machine actually opens and close you know on a screw machine they open and close these kind of automatically as part of the cycle um, but the way they work is you cock them and that brings the the chasers down to the right diameter and then a uh, I don't have one here but uh, uh, something like this comes in and uh, you feed onto that and it cuts that thread and then when it reaches the end uh, it trips and opens up and now this can retract out um, so now this this little dog here it looks like it's been used a little bit I loosened this you can take that out that's for the you know on the machine and then there's a uh, a little manual handle here manual handle that you can you can cock and uh, and uh, do the do the deed with that. So uh, this has got a little trip mechanism here, but uh, I haven't played with it very much. I'm just messing around with it a little bit. And then uh, there was a whole bunch of chasers that he sent along with it. Some of these are actually really useful sizes. Oh, that one, quarter twenty-eight, half thirteen. This is ten thirty-two that's in it. And then uh, there's another. Somebody was doing. Uh, a lot of nine six. Oh no, that's quarter twenty. Sorry, quarter twenty eight thirty two. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, what's that one there? Oh, that's ten thirty two. That's what's in it. And what's that one? Six thirty two. Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's very cool. Thank you very much. And uh, that's a great size and a good shank size. And so you can put this in the tailstock and the lathe and do uh, lots of threaded rod. And the threaded rod can go all the way through that because there's a hole. So you can make you can make your own all thread basically. So uh, lay, thank you very much. This is great. Um, you know, this is some really uh, some really neat stuff. I appreciate it, and I thank you and your dad. 
Um, for uh, thank you, Dad, for collecting it from the Brooklyn Navy Yard, and you for hanging on to it, and then uh, passing it along to me. I really appreciate it. All right, next item here, leatherette case. This is always intriguing. So if you're at the flea market and you see one of these laying there, always pick it up and look at it. You never know what's going to be in it, and that's the situation here. And what this is is uh, it's a um, I believe this goes in a, a microscope and that little uh, metal disc in the center has a scale etched on it um, that uh, would be projected on the, uh, on the object that you're looking at. So this slips into the microscope somehow or possibly a, uh, um, a, a comparator of some sort in front of the uh, projection lens and this projects a scale on it that has uh, ten thousandths of an inch and then a little scale that has one thousandths of, one thousandths of an inch. So I looked at it under, uh, under a loop and you can actually just barely make out the scale. You guys won't be able to see it. Uh, but it's in its own little, uh, own little protective case and the, uh, um, the uh, were the sides angled? I don't remember now. I thought the sides of the glass were angled. I guess not. I thought they were. Okay. Anyway, so that's a Bausch and Loam uh, little uh, reticle there. So, all right. All right. Next item. Brown and Sharp box. Hmm. Now, I've, at first I thought this was a V-block, but that's not what it is. So let's pop it open and look at it. And what this is, according to the box here, is this is a combination roughing and finishing hollow mill so um, yeah so the way I think this is used well, it's got cutting edges on there look it cuts on the bottom and uh, and then it cuts on these inner things so maybe it's for making um, round shapes yeah so it does something it does a like a counter bore with a stem sticking up or something like that. Now it looks like it's adjustable for diameter on the side here. You can loosen these up and then uh, and then tune these uh, these cutting bits to change the uh, the cutting diameter. So um, um, this may be a screw machine. Uh, actually, you know, looking at this shank, I'm I'm thinking that's what this is. Is this is a a screw machine thing? So you know, you got some rod stock like this. Maybe this will fit. No. You got some rod stock like this so the screw machine comes up and goes and you know it's like a box turning tool right and, it, and it'll turn a diameter corresponding to whatever you set those at. Oh, well wow, only one of them is adjustable. Interesting. Well, I guess they're all adjustable. You just have to tap them in or whatever. Anyway that's what I think it is. Uh, maybe somebody out there in uh, internet land uh, uh, can Give me, I've never used anything like this. Uh, I've never run a screw machine myself, so. Okay, Brown and Sharp, yeah, Brown and Sharp made a lot of screw machine stuff, so. Anyway, you know what, I guess we could look it up, huh, Drew? Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, wooden box with a rubber band. Now, uh, I, I know what's in here, but I'm gonna surprise you guys, so. The box is a little rickety, but let's take a look. Now, what's cool about this, so, I read the label on the end of the box, but I didn't take it out of this paper, okay? This is completely spontaneous on camera here. We're gonna open it up, and it's got this kind of treated paper here, okay? The box is, uh, is falling apart here. Let's, let's unwrap it. Let's see how, how well this paper did its job here. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's still got the original goop on it. <laughs> so, and this is a uh, this is a very old style planer gauge here, and it's got the original packing grease on it. Now, what this looks like to me is stare. You know, okay, stare it shipped it, okay, and um, but. The Navy opened it up and said, you don't put enough corrosion inhibitor on it. We're going to put corrosion inhibitor on it. So uh, this is 
Cosmoline, I believe, here. Uh, Starrett doesn't ship their stuff like this and probably never did. Um, although, my experience with this Navy Cosmoline is this stuff works. And, uh, well, you know what? I'm, I, I'm not going to peel it all here. So, this thing is, is unused. It's completely virgin and, uh, you know, some guy in the 50s in the Navy Yard took it out of the box, glopped it up with Cosmoline, wrapped it up in this, uh, you know, military paper here, and stuffed it back in the box and put it on the shelf. So, uh, yeah, it is absolutely unused. Now, this is a small one here. This is kind of cool. Normally, they're bigger than this. So, uh, we'll get that cleaned up and, uh, and get a better look at it. Pretty cool, man. Right, right out of history there. That's neat. Okay, you guys ready? So we're waiting for uh, a certain gentleman from uh, Mississippi to enter the room. Uh, we're waiting for James Kilroy because I know he's really going to um, really like what's underneath this rag. Uh, now you guys saw that planar gauge when it was all covered with Cosmoline um, that uh, uh, it was just caked with Cosmoline and uh, who knows what it looked like underneath. Well, I got it all cleaned up. And I just want to say that it's pretty spectacular, so we're going to unveil that and look at it now. And there it is, uh, all cleaned up. And it's just absolutely flawless uh, in, every, in every way. And it has that cyanided finish. Um, there's not a spot of rust on it. It has a, you can barely see it in here. It's got a little, uh, uh, I think this is the only thing that may be wrong is, uh, there was probably white paint behind the vial, and uh, and that's kind of discolored now. And uh, but you, the vial is still is still there, and it works, right? Um, there it is, and uh, it's everything works fine. Uh, it took a while to clean it. They just don't put this finish on uh, stuff anymore. So late. Thank you very much. This is a real special uh, special piece here. Um, it's, it's never been used, so they took it out of the box and, uh, and um, cosmolined it and then, uh, and then put it back in the box and it went on a shelf somewhere. Now, I happen to know that, uh, that Mr. James Kilroy collects things with, uh, with this particular kind of finish on it, and uh, so he's probably, uh, that, that, that intake of breath you just heard was probably from Mississippi and, uh, and him, uh, <gasps> taking a deep breath in. It's gorgeous. This, they just don't make stuff like this anymore. This is uh, really, really nice. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention was uh, uh, at the end of his uh, Lay's letter, he, uh, you know, he's from New Jersey, right? So he says, uh, um, hey, P.S., if you're ever in New Jersey and someone smiles at you, they're probably from out of town. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching.